Uh, hi, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Sidra from University of Florida to present our medical image diagnosis network. So in the past few years, computer vision experts explored using deep learning to better understand uh, uh, nature images. For example, we solved the task of image classification to recognize objects or action recognition to understand their behaviors. Furthermore, we are interested in generating image captions to describe the content of images or with visual attention to show the focus of network. So image with, uh, uh, captioning with attention has attracted a lot of interest in recent years and provided a way to interpret the network prediction. So, okay, uh, those are the nature images we see mostly in CVPR. Now please follow me to look at the very different kinds of medical images that is related to the health of everybody. So this is a very large microscopic pathology image of a patient at the risk of a uh, most common type of bladder cancer. Uh, when doctors diagnose, they need to examine the tumor region along the uh, ulicinum new regions. And by taking an even closer look, we can clearly see the cell structures. For example, the nuclear exhibit the moderate polymorphisms, and the polarity is partially lost. And by observing and recording such image features based on some medical rules, a doctor can write a diagnosis report and make a suspect conclusion. So in our study, we try to answer the question of how to generate such a complete report given regional interesting. So it is not only a very interesting and unexplored problems, but it also has very important clinical values, and we will see. The analysis of medical images inside our body system has given increasing attention recently, and the research has shown the power of deep learning uh, to um, improve the automatic diagnosis for different type of diseases. For example, uh, there are many photo cancer are caused inside of organic system, and their diagnosis need image level understanding, unlike CT, MR, ultrasound, microscope uh, image modalities. And we just observed some remarkable work published recently to address those different challenges. For example, a Stanford group trained deeply model to detect skin cancers, and an NIH group teaches machine to read checks as rain, and also a Google group t uh, using deep learning to detect a tumor of breast microscope images. So interestingly, more and more papers show that using powerful artificial intelligence with extensive data can achieve or even surpass doctor-level diagnosis performance. In some type of cancer, the consistent diagnosis between doctors could be uh, surprisingly low, as some studies reported. So we think the purpose of AI is not replacing doctor, but augmenting their ability to diagnose. So using AI to help doctors to reduce such interferences in clinicals is a very meaningful task. One advantage of machines to learn from large data and generate consistent diagnosis. So better than generated diagnosis labels, our method that generate an interpretable diagnosis in the form of nature language and very attentions provide a useful second opinions for doctors in clinicals to improve their objectivity uh, when diagnosed for, for patients. So moreover, automating such a report writing process and can largely reduce the workload of doctors. And we believe this will be the future promising direction where our approach take an early step to this goal. So our task shared quite similar um, technical ingredients with the nature image method, uh, following a encoder and decoder uh, styles. But differently, there are several unique problems you're going to meet. And uh, when you handle any kinds of medical images with, uh, with diagnostic uh, reports, first, a data usually is not sufficient and the universal scene is not available due to the diverse of modalities. And the image-related semantic knowledge or concept is often latent in the long reports. And also, the standard evolution matrix may not be suitable for evaluation. So in the rest of my presentation, I'm going to clarify them all and address them one by one. Okay, so here is an overview of our MDNet. So given the input image, our MDNet first output a diagnosis report to, uh, to describe all images and give conclusion, and also with very attention to show the focus of the network. So we will introduce our method in three part, image model, language retention models, and network training. Extracting image features uh, using CN is still a, a key for successful, successful text generation. We need to consider two facts that is common in medical images. First, medical image is not that sufficient we discussed above, and that the image features in medical images often exhibit in the various sets of area. So uh, improving the model efficiency and the multi-scaling is very important. Our image model is built on the ResNet, so a recent study showed that ResNet has implicitly ensemble aspects. So when considered from this uh, perspective, we argue that the current classification model is not optimal. Here's uh, our analysis. Pay attention to the mass formulation of the ResNet. 
A cross nature model using pooling to generate feature vector and a single weight to compute the labor probabilities. However, letting all layers to share a single weight W undermine the effects of different layers, uh, which is not good for example, right? So uh, in our method, we try to decouple the output from different layers and use individual weights to decide the importance. So to realize our idea in the network design, we simply modify the skip connection between, uh, res uh, between reserve blocks when feature maps changes from addition to concatenation, and so as to uh, encourage the model scale information in assembling in the last layers. So uh, note that we just did very, very simple changes and nothing else. Here, we demonstrate the effectiveness of analyze on a safer data sets compared with the ResNet with 10 million parameters and the wild ResNet with 8.7 million parameters. As can be seen, so our method with uh, only 10 million parameters achieved quite significant improvement. So here, uh, for the language retention model, we need to focus on two things. Uh, how, to, um, how to effectively extract the semantic knowledge from the reports and also in, uh, generate more effective retention maps. Basically, to generate the text given images, the image model needs to compute the image features which are used by the language model to generate the relevant text one word at a time. It is important to know that uh, uh, different from natural image captions, uh, medical images are long and contains uh, different kinds of biomedical image features. So uh, to obtain a better mapping uh, between image and text, we need to let the image model understand the semantic knowledge. So using a single forward to model full reports uh, brings difficulty to capture the strong semantic concept uh, for CN optimization. So in our model, during the next training, given the input uh, image and the report, we have two designs. First, we convert the full report to semantic uh, feature sentences and use each, each LSTM to focus one type of sen uh, descriptions. And all the sentences are composed in batches and uh, before sending to the LSTM. Second, to allow LSTM be aware of the uh, different uh, concept, we have a conditional input of LSTM to uh, specify that so that all the tasks uh, share the same LSTM parameters. So in this way, uh, the difference in knowledge will be uh, modeled respectively and uh, back together for the image model training. To compute the attention model, the um, attention model uses information from both text and uh, languages uh, to compute attention on the image regions. So when we use the original attention maps, uh, original models, we found attention maps often smoothly highlight the majority of image areas. So we hypothesized it because two reasons. First, they are lacking fine-grained uh, semantic labels to train CN to guard semantic uh, feature maps. And also, uh, training effective attention models usually needs large data. We introduced the uh, auxiliary attention shopping module to help, so which uses the implicit localization property of global average pooling, proposed by the Bolli Zhou to uh, generate an embedding we call the class of spec attention, and we inject such, from, inject such information into the attention computation uh, during, the, during the text generation. And here we show the results compared with the original attention models. As can be seen, uh, our attention uh, can more accurately attend on the Ulysses regions and which are used by the doctor to diagnose. So we have discussed uh, full models. Now we need to introduce how to train our network end to end from scratch given the reports. So the AES module also acts like a fully connected layer that to train the image models using the uh, diagnosis labels and the LSTM is supervised by the full reports. Um, so the image model will receive two losses from two models, right? So uh, we use parameters beta uh, to control the weights of gradients. As can be seen in the bottom right plot, and uh, our strategy will let AES module to dominate the training first and gradually let the ASTM to co-adapt and take over so as to bring semantic information fully to the image model. So to, uh, to, to evaluate our method, we have collected a, a blood image data set uh, for the image again from 32 patient host slides. And uh, for each image, there are five reports uh, written by doctors in their languages and results in total 5,000 pair data. So to, uh, to, we use a classic method called NeuroTalk2, a famous method for natural image captioning as a baseline for comparison. So apart from the standard tax quality evaluation, we, to make a more definite evaluation of the pathological meaningful keywords, and we evaluate the predicted diagnosis conclusion accuracy, we call it DCA, that is extracted from the general report tax. And uh, as can be seen, our method showed better performance in the standard matrices. And our model outputs two kinds of attentions. 
The left side shows the class specific tension output by the AES model. As can be seen, our tension can show high qu uh, quite high correspondence with the pathological, uh, pathologist's annotation in the middle line and the right regions. And the right side shows the attention from the attention models. Uh, we realized in, in the video uh, that we can observe the attention model can capture the nuclear dense regions with high cell variances. And uh, this is great with the pathologist's opinion. So in clinicals, uh, doctors also have the need to retrieve the history data based, uh, based on some symptom descriptions for, to assist the diagnosis. So to make such quantity evaluation for this text-based uh, image retrieval, the original matrix that uh, retrieved the ground truth image of coral text is not logically correct uh, because uh, medical images with similar diseases could also share similar reports. Uh, so instead, we evaluated the ratio of the retrieved image with the correct disease, disease labels compared with the retrieval uh, descriptions. So it's the definite evaluation of the image text mapping and the overall understanding of the uh, of, of the semantic concept of it in a description because it is a failure to retrieve a normal images with a disease description. So here we show the results uh, used the uh, trained model before for the text quantity evaluation. So as can be seen, our method showed quite significant improvement uh, on all the matrices and it demonstrated that our method uh, can learn much better mapping between the image and text spaces. And uh, for the more uh, results and the ab ablation studies, please come to our papers. So to conclude, uh, we proposed our medical image diagnosis network that can generate a full diagnosis report with very retention or can retrieve images with symptom descriptions. And we discussed how to train the image model more efficiently and uh, better use the semantic knowledge from the report for the training. And we also discuss and take care of the evaluation matrices. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. If you have more questions, and uh, please come to the poster web page for more information. Yes. Any, uh, any questions? Go ahead. There is a microphone over here, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's quite uh, interesting work. So I have a basic question. Uh, since the pathological report are uh, generated for, for a patient, right? Uh, yeah. But it seems that in your paper, uh, the reports are generated for a patch. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is a good question. Here, seeing that uh, the pathology, uh, in, when doctors diagnose, as I said before, they need to look over the tumor regions and then locate the interesting regions. And they will find some interesting region and write a diagnosis report on that, and so as to con give a final conclusion based on some, some observations. So in, actually, in practice, they still, they still need to look over the actual image region to clearly see the cell structures and in order to describe that, everything. Yeah. So you are trained a patch-wise uh, report generating system, right? Yes, it's still Not that. Not patient-wise. Yes, yeah, I said before that because we, our input is still uh, the patch region of interesting. Yes. Okay, thank yes. you. Thank you. So in the, uh, by the way, so in the doctor's report, in the real doctor's reports, usually, uh, uh -huh. uh, usually they don't, maybe they react, actually write a report, right? So they, it's not just a decision whether this is cancer or not a cancer. Sometimes they're not so sure, so they write some report to describe the findings. Yeah, they give us a uh, do, you, do you guys actually, to me, it seems like you just, you have a binary decision, right? So that's how you get accuracy. Oh, no, not binary decision, because we, uh, when, uh, the new doctor report, you need to, uh, describe several features and also give, for, for our cases, we have several, because even for these cancers, they have different labels, and uh, they are very fine grained labels that is there. Because in our case, for example, there are four different kinds of labels for cancer, yeah. So do you, actually my question is, do you actually write a report? I mean, like, does a machine write a report? Yes, which looks yes. like a doctor's report. Yes, the, the, okay. the machine actually generates all the reports one word at a time, yes. 